In the last video, we set an image to be the background image. But if you look at the project mockup, we do have a background image, but that image is a little bit blurred. So how are we going to have that blurry effect? The translucent effect is everywhere in iOS. The use of translucency creates a sense of depth and vitality in your UI. The user has a sense that there's something behind it. In our case, we don't want to just have a normal background image. Like in the Inspire Us, that will upscale the album covers later on. We do wouldn't want to have just a single white or even merely black canvas either. So this could be a perfect solution. We'll use something called Visual Effect View with Blur. This is a new feature from iOS 7 and of course iOS 8. It is just a generic view, but it creates a blurry and translucent effect. So simply go over the object palette and type blur. Select the first one and drag it over to the view like this. Then we will need to resize it to the fill the whole screen I know it's a little bit too manual, but I will show you a way to do it precisely and more convenient later on. But in this intro project, we will try to cover as much feature in Xcode as possible. And especially in um, Storyboard, there's a lot of features because who knows that we will need to use them in our project, right? So now let's run it and see how it looks like. Yuck, it doesn't look quite right. Several things to note here. The background does look blurred, but we want it to be darker. Second, where on earth is this white ugly area comes from? Well, the answer lays in our storyboard. In the beginning, we changed the simulated, simulated size of the view to be 4 inch iPhone. So we design our UI with everything from the images to the views, to the blurry views, to buttons later on, or labels, things like that, in the respect to four inch iPhone. But the iPhone 6 or the iPhone 6 plus, or even iPhone 4 is actually 4.7 or even 5.5 or 3.5 inch. What Xcode does is it tries, tries to fit the UI on a larger screen. And that's why we left with this blank area on a larger screen, which is 4.7. In, in order to have our project look great on any screen size, we have to deal with something called auto layout. But that is for future videos. I will cover it in depth because it's a brilliant Yet at the same time, it's a very, very complex tool. So let's fix those things. We want to select the blur review and inspect its attribute. Over the attribute inspector, I will change the blurry type to be dark. That will give us a darker background. How about the screen size stuff? One quick and dirty solution for the learning experience is to try, uh, try to select the running simulator as iPhone 5s or iPhone 5, which has 4 inch screen. So let's select iPhone 5s and run it. There we go. It looks great and feels right. In this video, we will want to embed our view, the playlist view, into a navigation view controller, right? So that would then we can transition from this view to another view, such as the album view or the favorite view. Before going into that, let's select the view controller. And then over the status bar, click editor. 
then embed in, then click navigation controller. We will then have a navigation bar like this and the whole view will become a root view controller of this navigation controller. But we want the navigation bar to be black with white text. Very simple, we can inspect the navigation bar but first we need to select the navigation bar. Go over to the document outline like this. Then click into the navigation controller. Choose the navigation bar below it. Now with that navigation bar selected, we can inspect it. Over the attribute inspector, we can choose the bar tint to be black. But I don't want it into completely opaque black. I want it to be 50% opacity black. So I will change the opacity like this into 50%. Great. Now I want to change the font of the text in the navigation bar to custom font. But um, there's a bug over here, so we have to choose uh, system first, and then we change it back to custom. Now I want to change the family font to be every near next. The point size, point size to be 20. Okay. Now I want to change the text of the nav bar into the Beatles. So you can double click onto that or click into that and change it over the attribute inspector, the Beatles. Okay, so let's run it. But I want to text to be white. This white, all the subsequent view controllers embedded in this navigation controller will have a black navigation bar with white text. So I will go in to do this. Excellent. Let's start thinking about what are the components in the main view, in the playlist view. We have a label right up front. So let's drag it. Let's drag one label from the object palette to the view. We will center it using the blue guidelines again. So let's change the default text into something like some albums from 1960 to 1970. Now let's drag it back to the center using the center blue guidelines. Okay. So now I want to change the font of this and the color to be white. Let's choose the font to be customed. Avenir next, which is the font family again. And the size to be maybe 17, yeah. And you see that the text is cut off because the text is longer than the width of this label. One thing is we can just drag it using those borders, but I promise you to, to teach you another way to do it more precisely, right? So here's another way. You can just choose that label and then use the command equal and that will do everything for us. And then we can change it back. Before working on the album covers, let's talk about the My Favorite button. There's some good things to talk about it. So first, this button is, isn't is completely the same as our button in Inspire Us. It does have a background color, but this button in the mockup, it is blurred background color. So the way we're going to do this is we will drag another blur view into the object from the object palette into the view again. So I would start to type blur and then drag it to the view like this. I will make it fill the whole width and down to the bottom. One thing we can do is we can just drag the borders like we just did in the beginning. But there's actually a better way to do this. So let's select the blur view and go over to the size inspector. Change the width to 320 the height to be 44 because we want this to be the background for our button and 44 is a pretty good size of this kind of button okay so let's drag it back to the bottom like this using the blue guidelines again again blue guidelines are our friends so our final job in this video is to drag out a button and 
overlay it onto this below view. So let's do it. I will start to type the button over the object palette and drag one out like this. I will place it on top of the blue view. Then I will drag its corner to fill the whole width to fill the whole view like this. Okay, so let's inspect it. I will, I will change the font to be 20 points. Okay, and it could be custom, Avenue next, and maybe regular, yeah, or medium. Okay, done. And I will change the tint color, the text color to be white. And look at this, it's a little bit small, so I will change it into 20 points and demi bold because this Avenue next font is it's a little bit too thin. Okay, how about the image? We want a little star over here in the button and we already have the that star in our project assets so that star is the favorite star i prepared for you so let's select that button and over the image i will type favorite the minute i type fav then auto completion will do the job for me and then i will have to drag it back to the size to fill the whole width and height of the view the blur view like this okay so let's run it Okay, it looks uh, not very good, but we have that star and we have that white button. But you look at this, I want the star to be white. It's a little bit too gray. And we want to have a little space between the button text and the star. So let's do that. So choose the button. Over the attribute inspector, I will choose the typed to be system. That will help us to have this star to be white. The system is just that this button is a system button. And it also creates some visual effects for us, animation. Like when we press it, it will gray out the whole thing like that. Okay, let's choose other things. I want it to be a little space between the button, the text, and the star. So I will choose over the edge, the edge option I choose title and the title to the left i want to have 10 points so left i will place 10 and enter okay so let's run it so we see that we have that little space and the whole thing is white very nice in the next video we will learn how we're going to place those album covers on the canvas like this so see you in the next video.